And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer to the temple, coming to us straight from Poison, Poison Potion Press, try saying that three times fast, and creator, uh, and creator of the upcoming campaign setting for, fi for 5th edition known as Eldric Sands, the one, the one and only Florian Emmerich, uh, not, to be, not to be confused with a certain overrated director. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing good. Hello there. Yeah, I was I was legally mandated to put a to put a to put a um to put a Roland Emmerich joke at least at least once. So <laughs> I mean the, the the last name is also shared with a famous uh, soccer player here in Germany, so Yeah, we I can pick um, our poison and we have a city name with that name too, yeah. so. Um Well the it is. It is kind of funny that this is not, that this is now the second week in a row I've I've had someone I've had someone doing something R RPG related. That's that's from uh, Ger that's from Germany. Um, unfortunately, I I still can't get the dark eye devs on, so I can t so I can make that a hat trick. <laughs> well, we are engineers, so yeah, we probably want to fiddle with all the rugels and cover them together. Yeah. Um, although. Apparently, apparently, some people have gotten a kick out of the joke that I put in the Dark Eye review, where where I, where I, where I, where I called Germany the land of cheese and power metal. I, I, I wouldn't say say that, but it's fair enough. <laughs> well, I made the I made the joke because one, a lot of power metal bands seem to come from Germany, and two, unless I'm mistaken, Germany is the largest per capita consumer of cheese. We do love our <laughs> cheese, but. Uh... When I think of cheese, I'm not thinking about Germany. I mean, they're usually uh, um, stereotype as beer, 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 and more beer. Well, yeah, there's that to the point where there's a where there's a categorization thing, and uh, with um with the guy I had on last week, we had ha we had a discussion about um about beer snobs in Germany. That could be true, but <laughs> I mean, I'm more of a wine drinker, so I wouldn't know. Um, um. Nah. Well, there, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of micro brews in in a uh, midwestern uh, U.S. and a whole and a whole lot of pub crawling, so it's a lot of those that I end up del I end up delving into. Not a whole lot of the the wine stuff is more the East Coast thing, I, or the uh, not East Coast but West Coast. I don't really do, I don't really delve into that into that particular pool. Um, I'm not I'm not as much of I'm not highfalutin enough for it. Oh. Fair enough. But luckily, we're not talking about spirits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, spirits in another kind. Yeah. So, it's a bit of a tradition to open with the humble beginnings, in a sense. With that in mind, I'd like you to walk me through your first introduction to role-playing games and what made it stick. So... It actually was a happenstance... Um, um, a meeting with a Canadian who maybe was an exchange student at my school, and he had the Steen D third edition, I would say, book mm -hmm. with all the depicted uh, like pictures of dragons and all these creatures, and like I was immediately hooked, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Oh, can you lend me that? I want to create a dungeon." And I probably did a terrible, terrible job, but I was easily hooked, and he was so supportive, and yeah, and yeah, that. Like that openness of this person and saying, "Yeah, go for it. Do be crazy." That stuck with me, and yeah, like just like you can just pick, open those books, pick anything, and create a, an adventure from it. That's uh, great that you can like not just tell stories but list stories. Mm -hmm. So. With with that in mind, how did how did the idea of Eldric Sands come about? I know I know that in the Kickstarter you mentioned being influenced by seventies and eighties science fiction and horror, but there but that's a pretty wide <coughs> net. So I'd like to narrow that down a little bit if you don't mind the fishing references. That 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 that's absolutely okay. And um, truth be told, it started out as pure fantasy campaign setting. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but I quickly um, noticed that I didn't want to deal with gods and religion, and it didn't hook me as much as I wanted to. Um, also, I wanted to do like a statement because obviously, as you, if you did introduction, it's a statement about what's our world becoming to. Um, like, okay, this is like also the statement of our world has gone to, sh- to shits, so to speak. Um, yeah, and that's why I wanted to put it in the far future. Which I can, I can cert- I can certainly get I can certainly get to that. And were were there any um were there any were there any particular na- any particular names or any particular works that you that you can think of that provide when it came to when it came to the sci fi the science fiction you were drawing on that that spring to mind? I mean, a lot of the, the really classics like um, Alien, Aliens, and the Thing already like influenced me heavily. Mm-hmm. But also Star Wars, that was especially um, that's more mm-hmm. on a Sam planet. Um, a little bit of Dune, but n- not as much. Maybe subconsciously. That's now with the remake, I have to mention it. <laughs> and I wouldn't. Yeah. Call, I wouldn't call that a. I wouldn't call that a remake. Uh, spe- especially, especially since well, David Lynch does not like talking about the about his take on it. I, I have to. I have to say, I've never seen it for, for right now because I'm currently avoiding the cinemas because of a certain. Um, Event going around globally, so. Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, it, there's it. I know that they put the film on HBO Max, so there's that. So there's that option. We don't have that here in Germany, but oh. don't tell anyone. <laughs> 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 okay, fa- okay, fair point. Um. And unfortunately, I'm not sponsored by NordVPN or something or something like that, so I can't take that route either. I can't take that route either. But you're not sponsored by them. The internet is sponsored by NordVPN. <laughs> <laughs> but we, but that it's it is interesting to bring that to bring that kind of thing up, especially since you you kind you kind of have you kind of have the the dichotomy of a vast wasteland and a um, and a, and a metal dome in the form of in the form of oasis, which would when it comes to oasis when it comes to that particular area, are you were you going with the vibe that um places places like the oasis places like the oasis aren't full on sanctuaries; they're just safer. Uh, yeah, they're definitely safer, but yeah. Um, to use another example, that on safer. Yeah. To use another example of that kind of dichotomy, the um, the prison settlement in The Walking Dead, it beats the hell out of going out in the wilderness, but you're not, but you're only safer. For me, it was more like a little bit of um, bubble bubble cup crisis that also influenced this, oh. where like um, you had like these those boomers that were within the population, and mm-hmm. I wanted to recreate it. Also, again, the thing that. Something is admit admit to uh, admit their uh, population. Mm-hmm. And with and with that with that in with that in mind, um, one of the one of the one of the one of the um, selling points, arguably, is the fact that the PCs are Eldritch Tech users, and. The, and that can that can take the form of that can take many forms of of course, but one of the, but one of the big one of the um big ones is the suits. And I'm guessing, I'm guessing that's all that I'm guessing that's also where Bubblegum Crisis was a bit was a bit of an a bit of an influence, given the fact that you're doing power suits and there was the whole thing with the suits in that um anime. <clears throat> totally. I mean, um, you know, when the Unicorn suit and the like all the suits where I have been created for especially art for the Kickstarter on the start. Um, I used a- actually pictures from Bubblegum Crisis and say, "Yeah, make them cool." Mm-hmm. As and, reference. Yeah. Now, with the, with that in mind, would it would it be fair of me to say that the that 
the suit is a is a class of sorts, or is it or not? Well, it substitutes a class, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's their, um, <clears throat> um And we're gonna also introduce suitless rules where you really, really without any power, which probably adds a little another level of dread. It will be f heavily unbalanced for the favor of your enemies, uh, but. Yeah, that's like just a little bit to dread your suit malfunction, or you have to leave your suit because of reasons. It's uh, the, the space you need to get to is mm -hmm. too tight for the suit to fit. Yeah. Now, with that with that kind of thing in mind, um, what can you what can now in the P in the PDF exam in the PDF sample, you presented the first ten levels of the owl bear suit. Um, what could you tell me about what could you tell me about the about the suits that are going to be in the book and what sort of archetype that they're following? So to clear up some misunderstanding, it's ten levels max. Okay. We wanted it because of various reasons. Number one is there's data from Wizard of the Coast mm -hmm. that says um, a lot of campaigns end after level 8, level 7, level 10. And we wanted everyone, no matter how much their commitment to experience uh, all the powers of the suit. Also, we do didn't want to have like this level 1, 2, 3s that might have been skipped on correct character creation for veterans to be like the dull levels. We wanted them just right off the bat, level 1, you got to do great stuff. Mm-hmm. Now, with with that in, with that in mind, there on the Kickstarter page, there's three suits that you um, sh that you showcase, and I think those would be th um, the three to built to build upon. Now, the owl bear suit would it be fair of me to say that that's for that's for people who want to be the tanky approach? There are five suits currently in, mm -hmm. in the final product. The owl bear suit, as you said, is the tanky, the, like the fighter. That gets in the thick of things. We have to set set your suit, who is more like um, manipulation of the battlefield, mm -hmm. uh, but also like roguish archetype, but more in favor of ma battlefield manipulation. We have the unicorn suit, which is your healer, and eldritch influence manipulation in favor for healing. Mm -hmm. We have the nightmare suit, that's a, a, some variation of the. Unicorn suit, um, because as you see, all of the names are built from the monster manual um, uh, to be like reminiscent of the fantasy setting it originated, originated from. Mm -hmm. And the nightmare suit um, takes Eldritch influence and haunts its enemies. It's more enemy manipulation than battlefield manipulation. Mm -hmm. Now, with that with that kind of thing with that kind of thing in mind. <clears throat> something something else I was something else I was curious about is in regard to um, suit modules. Um, essentially, essentially the supplemental features that can that that can be that can be put on that can be put on a given suit. Um, whenever you have those kind, whenever you have those kind of choices, there's a temptation among some, among some players to work to worry that they're going to be stuck with that. Do you plan on having any any sort of any sort of um, rules or GM advice about sw about swapping modules? Um, well, there is already in the preview field that we can swap the modules on the game master's discretion. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you are out in the uh, uh, endless ocean, the arid desert, um, you probably not. But we want also people to experiment, like not going for the this is the optimal build, but going for the good build for the mission or like, okay, I want to try this for the session and not very that they're stuck on with this feature, but that they're like, okay, I can do that. And after two or three sessions, if I don't like, I just swap it out for the next one. Yeah. But with now with that, with that kind of thing in with that kind of thing in mind, I'm get I'm guessing that I'm guessing that a few of the a few of the a few of the more traditional classes, the um, the SRD approved, the um, <laughs> the OGL approved classes, 
might have a bit of difficulty within this setting, or would all of them be compatible? No, like, you really have to choose a suit. It's not like you can bring your dude over. We want to get, like, clean slate, that's why level 10, there's a lot, a lot of, let's say, system hack that we did to mm-hmm. make that happen. But like we also wanted to do something unique. We don't didn't want to present like okay, this is the world. Just bring you to it, do whatever. We wanted that from the point when you already create your character, play with it. You feel this is something unique, and even if you just play one or two, three sessions, that like this could be like the palate cleanser. Like okay, I've played enough in the Forgotten Realms. I had a one year campaign. Oh. I just want to stick with uh, the fifth edition rules because I know it now by heart, but I want to do something completely different and wild. Mm-hmm. Now, one of the things that you that you've kind of hinted at is that Eldritch Tech is can be very powerful, but it but at equal measure it can be very dangerous. And this brings me to the Whispers, as well as the as well as the Overload mechanic that you've put, that you put in. Mm-hmm. Now. Was was that was that was that to put a bit of risk and reward into into certain mechanics to make sh- and um, reinforce that being at, that being out in the sands is not a walk in the park. Um. So this kind of corruption, I had uh, like, and created like a document for all the creators that are on there, um, mm-hmm. just to. Um, like get a feeling of what I want and where they can be well and just um, oh, like it was not like this risk reward thing from the outset. It was like okay, you you, you should are gonna corrupt sometime in the campaign and then we had it back and forth and thought hey, we can do like powerful stuff that you feel powerful and. Um, we actually had some playtests about that, mm-hmm. and people liked the, the abilities. But they were like, "Oh, should I should I use Eldritch Influence because all of these abilities are you can do a short or long rest, then use it again, or you can load up on Eldritch Influence and do it again right now." Mm-hmm. And yeah, it went great because it has this like, "Okay, this is there's this foe I need to strike him down," um, but then. I, I have to load up on Eldritch Influence, and um, for the listeners to explain it, once you get a level of Eldritch Influence, you get a D4, and you roll it on a table, and it's cumulative. So if you get another level of Eldritch Influence, you roll two D4s, and when you roll a 12 with those D4s in mind, you get a Core Corruption, Mm -hmm. and when you hit three Core Corruptions, your PC is gone to the Whispers. He's like overtaken by this Eldritch Force that now commands this body. Mm-hmm. Basically, you're possessed. Um, yeah, and we we wanted this dread that like this ever impeding dread that your character will fall sooner or later, but it's on your terms when you fall. And like, okay, you can slay this huge beast that is destroying or is threatening to destroy the whole oasis, and it's like. Your whole party is down, but you know when you overload, you will you will get the third, third core corruption. Um, we made it so that you can still um, enact your action, so it's not like oh, you have core corruption, the action is gone. We want it to feel good, even if you fail with those core corruptions, and so you can save the day by sacrificing the character. Mm-hmm. Now, with with that kind of thing in with that kind of thing in mind. Um, with the one of the, one of the bit one of the big um enc- one of the big encounter there's two particular monsters that you, that you highlighted in the Kickstarter that I wanted to go into one of them being the mimics which you ro- which you wrote <laughs> you wrote in all caps as as a um a, as I believe a acronym that's set. And the other, the other is the de- is the deep water spiders. Um, yes. And when it comes to, when it comes to the mi- when it comes to the mimics, the way you describe it, that's where that's where I end up thinking of 
the of um the the fact that you brought up the thing as a point of influence. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm get I'm guessing I'm guessing that mimics would be would be would be akin would be akin to would be akin to that Essen essentially mach um, mach um essentially possessed machines. <laughs> So, okay, the mimics, it's an acronym, mm -hmm. and we will never tell you what the acronym is in the book. Our mm -hmm. stance is that we talk, talk among the staff is we wanted to call, want to call them mimics mm -hmm. as a name. Um, we wanted it to be as an acronym, but not like, oh, we're going to, like, it's something that um, just got lost over time and everybody's calling them mimics, something that also happens with our language. And now Mimic is the standard name and nobody knows what the acronym stands for, but Mimic is the way to go. And everybody understands what you mean when you talk to about, about Mimics. Mm -hmm. um, um, yes, the Mimics are more or less time bombs and actually like they have been created and the whole Oasis actually had at one point used Eldritch Energy like the Mimics to make like the living more comfortable uh, for everyone. But yeah, then some glitches happened which is the cosmic threat that are the whispers or are, are called the whispers to give it a name. Mm -hmm. And they have all overtaken the dynamics and now the dynamics are, alive, are, are, are really alive and really on a mission. Nobody knows what because they cannot really talk to you. Um, yeah, uh, now this is just terrifying unstoppable force that can strike you down. Most of them have been decommissioned because, whoops, you can't have rampaging robots running around. But like, not every mimic has been caught. Um, uh, some retreated into the arid desert, and some retreated to like really the deepest bowels of the oasis. Mm -hmm. Now, I had also noticed that you applied a mim a mimic template so that so the possibility that mi that mimics don't have to be limited to just machines so we actually also looked at um a way like the srd is sometimes limiting to bring over and sometimes or sometimes you have a campaign and or you have created this cool monster in your fantasy setting and now you just want to play with your friends and say okay well, let's do our fantasy setting but in the future we have our rules there are some new rules um, some name changing because, like, I mean, every table plays a little bit differently, and while we have four fraction, they might call them differently, which is totally cool. Um, and but we wanted to give them a chance to bring your most beloved monster to our campaign setting without like converting them and taking space from other cool stuff we wanted to introduce or show mm -hmm. that would define the campaign setting a little bit more and give a little bit more glimpse of our thought process when you created the campaign setting. Mm -hmm. Now, the other, the other um, the other thing I was the other thing I was curious about is, given the given the fact that you have that you have you have a setting where you have essentially a safer area and a and a wilder expanse. Um, have have you have you guys given thought to putting in encounter tables, um, just when just when they're out just when they're out on the sands. There are some encounter tables, I can tell you that. And we also have, uh, I'll call it, this is like where you go to have your really suicide mission level 10, let's end this campaign on the Big Bang. We have this Eldritch Maelstrom, a fissure that create, uh, open on this world. Mm -hmm. And while we didn't want to introduce like interstellar travel to begin with, to give like the sense of that you are trapped in this dying world, and there's no way of escape. We, but there's this cosmic fissure. But this cosmic fissure, you really don't want to enter. But mm -hmm. like we have now introduced it, and this is more like the 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 the, um, the area to go to when you have your like level eight, level seven, level uh, level nine, ten st uh, campaign ending. Like okay, let's get into the wild and end it right here, right now. Mm -hmm. And with that, with that, with that in with that in mind, um, since I talked about encounters, give, the other thing I'd be curious about is 
is um, Eldric infli Eldric affiliated um, weather or na or natural effects that may happen out there? Is that something that's a possibility? Like not really in the sense that they give you Eldritch influence. We have rules for the um, uh, for the Eldritch Maelstrom that mm -hmm. um, uh, it might be harder for you to uh, as long as you stay that you gain Eldritch influence over time just for being in this area. Mm -hmm. um, but we also give you an Eldritch template so that you can because we give you this Eldritch Dragon, but we also want to give you a template so you can populate the area. Also, again, with the in mind, bring your monsters and not translating the whole SRD, because uh, if we would do a fantasy setting, we could say, like, hey, here, take all the monsters from the SRD, these are your monsters. You kind of can that too, but we want to give, like, okay, bring this monster over and give the spin with those rules. Mm -hmm. So they still feel unique, like, oh, this is, let's say, this is the Basilisk, but now the Basilisk has um, uh, more, more, more orifices, like there is some, something like uh, a, a white soul, it, can you apply to your, to your um, uh, creature and this makes it that you can't illuminate the area where this creature is in, so you can hide like some nasty stuff in the shadows, and even if they look at it, they will never see it. Mm -hmm. And when when the encounter begins, they probably will be surprised. We, we just wanted to give like a whole tools kit to the game master to populate this world without tying them too much down, mm -hmm. but also not leaving them behind in the sense of how should we say it? Um, like, okay, we don't give you enough to create a really um, uh, living world and a, a consistent campaign. Yeah. One thing I'm a bit one thing I'm a bit curious about, uh, given given what given one of the given one of these suits, this, well, two of them that mentioned that we mentioned before the uh, un the unicorn and the nightmare suit. Mm -hmm. Given that given that. Um, given that they see that they seem to have, they seem to portray some some kind of um, almost almost caster like almost caster like effect. Are they u are they utilizing spell slots, or is or are none of the suits utilizing those sort of effects? None of the suits will utilize spell slots. We probably uh, there are some rules how to apply casting, but if you want to be a more like the mage without warlock kind of type. That will be your M suit. Mm -hmm. He is more in mind with being. I want to cast fireball in your face. Yeah. And um, Alex did a wonderful job creating the M suit um, um, because he gave him uh, give like amp dice. And amp dice are, uh, are, are let's say, uh, uh, yeah. And, uh, and and pool, mm -hmm. so and pool are one d sixes um, you lay out before you ta uh, um, on your table, and depending on what you want to do with your with your text, you can't use those can use those d sixes either as a way to uh, hate the damage the how far you can cast, or if you at uh, later levels level three you can actually make a cone line or circle of your spells to yeah actually go ham and do you bidding um when it comes to elemental magic mm -hmm. now with that with that in mind when it comes to the when it comes to the tech level are we d when it, and specifically when it comes to weapons and not we um weaponry options um is it is it mostly is it mostly the standard affair, or are there some more modern or even futuristic um, weaponry to account for? So, again, we threw out a lot, and you have um, well um, a short list, but still um, a list for for the suits to take on. Oh, we wanted to have also this like melee weapon damage, like. Mm -hmm. 
to have like also the Star Wars you feel like oh or you have the light swords or whatever kind of so it has the science fantasy feeling but there are also ranged weapons and there's also faction specific weapons for each of the four factions we have one specific weapon that the game master can give out on reward we don't have any sort of renown or uh, or monetary compensation you need to get to those weapons. We um, say that they should be given out on a mission to mission basis or uh, how the game master feels like it mm. so that he can give them. But we also didn't want to quantify it with, oh, this mission, you have to calculate your, uh, uh, your monsters, you're throwing at them. And, uh, the taxing environment, and then they can use to spend this pool for these and these kind of weapons, uh, because we think we did a good job in balancing them. And yes, even if you take one of those big weapons, uh, we want it to be fun forward and not like okay, but you have to limit them, because again, it's level one to ten, and we have to have this eldritch influence mm -hmm. that will eventually. Um, to your character and we we want those characters to like say uh, meet a quick demise so you can go in and say okay let, let's try the other thing mm -hmm. now, and with the and within the, within that are there any um, are there any particular ta are there any particular um, tags that is that is going to be exclusive to equipment in this setting to kind of reinforce that science fantasy vibe like all of them is, and we have some rep, uh, properties that uh, do this. Like, um, so yes, we have those laser thoughts esque, and mm -hmm. for us, it's called hard light. Um, you have this uh, 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 fantasy setting, but we also have oh, on the non-weapon stuff, just equipment. We also have charge packs that can charge doors open, mm -hmm. or um, even charge other equipment you gain to make it last longer. We have also like dune skippers that can um, <coughs> go around the air, transport you around the air desert so that you not just be home to, oh, let's move out by foot. Mm -hmm. And I suppose, in, I suppose in a, when it came to the equipment thing, I, I've been, I've been kind of dancing around this, but um, Given the given the fact that this is SF on one form or another, I have to ask the firearm question. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we we just used the ranged weapons rules, and we have ranged weapons. But mm -hmm. um, we think that uh, th yes, you can do ranged weapons, but some classes will be better off without weapons, like the MC2 slings elemental damage and mm -hmm. really has no need for we weapons. Um, or the Alba who wants to be in the thick of things. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's why we don't worry about too much about range weapons. We have them, but yeah, that an anti cannon, a slice anti, and heaven's rain. Uh, that are like more the, those prominent ones, but like also they don't, don't do like this, like this, this, uh, got awful amount of damage so you can just stand in the back and snipe and to be honest i mean it goes vice versa we have those weapons profiles and who's to say that there aren't the mimics that use heaven's rain uh, build within them mm -hmm. now within with that with that in mind one of one one other um one other concept that I see that I've seen I've seen a fa I've seen a fair bit is just is just elements in adding in adding the weirdness because when I'm, whenever I think of um, weird f of weird fiction one of the big one of the big RPG names that comes that comes into my mind is of course Numenera which has a fair am amount of advice on how to introduce that part of SF. Um, in the GM section for Eldritch Sands, do you get, do you plan on having a few pointers on how to on how to add more of the more of the weird factor into an Eldritch Sands campaign? I don't think that's even necessary for us to do. 
because um, it's actually the campaign setting as well, like how it, everything is described, how the world is built up. Um, I ha have to admit, I never played Numera, but I think um, you will be a Numera, you will be planet hopping, every planet is different. You are, you are restricted to this world, and this world has a distinct feel to it. Um, you don't you don't planet hop in um, Numenera. Numen um, you dimensioned hopped in the strange, but okay. Numenera is is one world, the ninth world that is weird. Thank you so much for that. But yeah, yeah, but like we, I think we detail everything in the campaign setting enough and flesh it out enough so that mm -hmm. um, it is um, actually quite clear how to employ that and how. And it hasn't hasn't have to be weird all the time, but it, like we also have all this evocative art that probably New Mark Manera also has. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen some of the internet around it. But yeah, yeah um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Like when you just open the book, flip the book open, and how to use that. Yeah. Now, within the Oasis, it's mentioned that there's f that there are four factions. Uh, and I'd, I'd like to I'd like to kind of go into those four factions to get the general vibe as as far as how, as far as how you might how what would be a good what would be a good way to utilize them in a, in a campaign. Yes, we will have a factional setting in there, so no problem. And one thing that also was laid out to me uh, was laid out for me to the to uh, to Alex and Chucky was. No faction will come on scarf. Everybody has a dirty ske uh, uh, skeletons in their closet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, it will be already by reading the faction quite obvious that, mm -hmm. like, when you when you step into it into the world of Eldritch and the gloves off. Oh yeah. Now, with that with that kind of thing in mind. What are you guys shoot? What are you guys shooting for as far as it as far as a total um, page count? We promised roughly fifty five plus, and that's where we're gonna land. As we see, uh, but again, I don't think that's a hindrance because also we, I on purpose made it, uh, created it from the start with like this should work with uh, a lower set of uh, pages. Mm -hmm. Because, like, if you see all this wonderful and great uh, campaign settings that have hundreds of pages, they just describe different countries, different continents, each continent on their own. Mm -hmm. But we also have, we just have this one arid world that has come to being broken and only the oasis as itself as this kind of point of refuge that is the city spanning dome, but it's still like. Uh, just hallways of metal, everybody doing their job to survive. So there's there's not a lot of room for conflict other than within the factions, which are mm -hmm. quite detailed. So, But I don't have to go and say, okay, but this kingdom is warring with this kingdom, and this kingdom pretends to be Swiss, but is in the middle of both kingdoms. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to tell, to tell this to Chris's. Yeah, we're, we're, not doing, we're, not doing a we're not doing a country analog setup like, say, the Genesis. Uh, I'm also not privy to this, but um, I, wa I, I was more thinking in line with, uh, like, let's say, let's stick with 5th edition, because that's probably m how more people compared uh, with Eberron uh, or uh, with uh, Forgotten Realms, where they have, like, this huge nation. I mean, you can fill a book just with, um, or, uh, like, 50 pages just with um, they in mind and the Red Wizards, and uh, how all the cities are run, but uh, what's the circles? Um, um, yeah, but we don't have like this uh, that we have to do that for every country or every nation or every continent. Mm -hmm. And with that, now with that in mind, what what do you? I know it's been, I know it's been, I know there's been quite a bit, quite a bit, and I do want to congratulate you guys on on. 
on man on managing to get managing to get as get as far as you guys did you guys did since you were only asking for about five thousand euro and you got twelve point five thousand during the campaign. Mm -hmm. Um. But what? Which ba which basically meant which unless I'm misreading it basically meant that you ended up meeting oh, meeting all of meeting um all of the stretch goals that you guys had. Yes. Oh. Um, but what are you shooting for as far as a release window? Not a not a hard date, but a general area on the so on the calendar. We had November 2011 and um, uh, 2021 in mind. Um, <laughs> 20, 2011. I'm not sure where time so, travel is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 2021 in mind. I'm sorry about it. Um, um, but like we didn't meet up quite a mark because of the ongoing pandemic, and um, uh, also also didn't want to run my step. Like all the, the decks in hand, like ragged, just because to meet this, this deadline, come hello high water, and that the product suffer because of it. I want it to be like the best it can. That mm. when it releases, it's good. We shoot now for early 2022, and it's looking like we're gonna stick with that, except somebody will break both of their hands right now, <laughs> which I'm not helping for. <laughs> Probably not. In the to make sh to make sure that we don't end up j end up jinxing or tempting the gods of irony. Yeah. Okay, it's not but, actual wood, but it's the closest I have. You know, it's early 2022, and it's looking very good that we can hold this promise. All right. Well, I I will I will be looking forward to seeing how to seeing how it develops. Oh. So we have this monthly just for backers where we really take some stuff from development and show it and um, which we do on a monthly basis um, you've probably seen also some part of this yourself mm -hmm. to that to that end i have to ask one i have to ask one important question sure was it really necessary to make a rick roll joke in, in the last update yes because <laughs> i wanted to have 80s music reference in every update which i did to the point but Come on, if you do 80s music and not include Rick Astley, what's the point of doing the updates then? Uh, look, all, all I'm gonna say is if all I'm gonna say is if I if if I see an update in a few months that that talks about seven keys, I'm out. No, no, uh, I think I I want to get Pat Benatar in at one point, <laughs> but <laughs> you'd put Pat that... you'd put Pat Benatar over Michael Kisk. Yes. I have to say, Pat Benatar is the reason why I'm going full ages with this. <laughs> okay, okay, we all we all have our biases, and I um, I ha I I it is my it is my do it is my moral obligation to roast everybody. So there it goes. <laughs> but um, uh, but with all that said, I would like to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come and. Come on to the show and enjoy the madness at play here. Thank you. It was my pleasure, and also a pleasure to sometimes like pull the cur curtain a little bit more and say, "Hi, look, the started actually is a fantasy thing, but we made it sci-fi, and it's something that like when you toil on your own behind a computer, you feel a bit lonely, but you want to talk to somebody, and say, "Look, I did this great thing, but I can't show you because it's not finished yet." <laughs> And anytime you see fit to return, whether it's to whether it's to go, whether it's to further delve into '80s movies, or 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 just to or just to argue about whether beer or wine is preferable, the door is always open. Uh, happy to be there. As I always say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Thank you so much. Cheers, Ted. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>